Hi guys, I saw that uh, Darren Nesbitt had a new uh, video about uh, the, a new model <laughs> of the Earth and let's take a quick look at what he's saying here. Initiations. Well, if you want to believe Madame Blavatsky and the Theosophist and all the occult. <sighs> Some of them are not to swear. Um, you know, then they were, they were used for mystical initiation. Again, where's the markings? You know, where's the, where's the, where's the evidence? An energy generator, again, you know, are, are, there, are there, you know, mini pyramids anywhere else that are, are generating energy around the world? I mean, does, there, does anybody know of a pyramid that actually generates energy and goes into the grid? We, we, we revere the Greeks and we revere the Renaissance, which obviously brought back the Greeks, the rebirth of the Greeks. And they're all occultists when you look, Pythagoras, etc., etc. Um, a lot of them were paedophiles as well, and they really were. What I was fascinated with was these internal shafts. Now, they weren't actually discovered for a long time. I think at the end of the day, the, the, um, the pyramid was sealed for a long time. The King's Chamber shafts, you can see the King's Chamber, I'm going to call them that for, for, you know, just because that's what they're called by most people, is not in the centre. The Queen's Chamber is, that's off centre. The King's Chamber shafts reach the outside, or you'd assume they do, you know, with no casing stones. But the Queen's Chamber shafts, first of all, they don't reach the outside. And they were both sealed until they were discovered in the late 19th century. It was a British engineer called Wayman Dixon who first discovered them. Um, they were measured till Flinders Petrie in the late 19th century. And then again, uh, I'll tell you about uh, Ganton Brink with his robots have measured them as well. But the thing is, these shafts, not only are they pretty much equal angles, so any um, uh, alignment with stars is just going to be coincidental if they're exactly equal. But the thing is, if it was built in a sort Again, you're not going to see anything. These, these things are only eight inches square anyway. And if you want to observe the stars, just go outside. Just go outside and observe them. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't add up. Um, the idea that with for ventilation shafts, again, the pyramid, you know, for the workers as they were building it, because it's not going to be ventilation for the dead pharaohs, is it? Um, the, the, top, the top is going to be completely open until the last... You know, until the capstone is put on. So you're going to have ventilation all the way up, right until the very end. That's the best way of ventilating it. Again, these shafts, it doesn't actually show it on here, but the Queen's Chamber shafts actually go along for six feet horizontally first, and then they go up. So you're not going to make good ventilation shafts for a start. You know, I'm just using uh, common sense and reasoning. We could make all kinds of conjecture and stories about them. I believe that these, the whole thing was built for its geometry simply for its geometry. I mean, we know that pi is, is um, represented in a lot of its measurements, and phi, the golden, great lengths to build this building and make it ge geometrically and ge geographically accurate. Now, what I found... Cue dramatic music. <clears throat> God built the earth, or a creator built the earth, is he going to create it higgledy-piggledy, slap a bit here, slap a bit there, or is he going to use absolutely perfect geometry and engineering to do it? If the earth is fixed and it's on pillars, why wouldn't there be the magic number seven of them? Why wouldn't they be arranged in perfect fashion? And we often see the earth on pillars with these long leggy columns all around the outside. It doesn't look like it's going to support the earth. map that we're used to, shape of the continents as we used to, but on a four-cornered, four-dimensional Earth. Antarctica is the continent at the bottom. <coughs> That's it for that video. <laughs> Let's see what else we've got. There are, but there is certainly a firmament above us. And it refracts the light, it refracts the sun and the moon and the stars, which is how the sun actually goes down as well. Um, we know refraction changes, obviously, the, the light it bends it. So as the sun moves further away from us, it goes exponentially further down. That's how we see the sun set, even though it's actually going straight across, which I may or may not show you in Blender shortly. So four dimensions, 
what's, what's this four dimensionality? I think we're kind of used to, like I say, the, the, the idea of a Pac Man effect, where basically you can keep going, you don't fall off, it's enclosed. Now, I made the point um, that if you're a creator and you're creating, creating, creating a world for, to be inhabited, would you enclose it with solid physical barriers? Because you know that they're going to explore and they're going to find them in the end and they're going to wonder, like Truman, I suppose, where are we? Are we enclosed in a prison? Or would you enclose it with doors that allow... So I just want to explain, obviously, East and West, I think people are used to. Uh, a lot of people ask, well, if you go off the north, do you come out the south? And again, that's not people's experience. What we tend to find... I can't do it. <laughs> what we tend to find, uh, I mean, with this, with, with this particular model, I'll just pause it. It's easier. Um, it's basically there's only east and west. Obviously, whichever direction you're going off at, you're going to come back on the other way. So, you know, this is why there's no edge. It's it's a little bit, like I say, it's a little bit difficult sometimes, or at first, to get your head around the four dimensionality of space. We're also programmed to believe time is the fourth dimension, where time has got nothing to do with space. It's a, just a, it's a different thing. It's like saying licorice is the fourth dimension. It's got nothing to do with it. As far as I'm concerned, there are three. So, but what he's leaving out is that it's a 4D octagonal hypercube. So, what I want to show you is this picture. Everybody knows this picture. Everybody knows what it what it is. Is the pyramid of uh, Giza, but nobody knows what it actually is. You know what it is, but you don't know what it is because you know what this is. This is a slice of life, actually. When we look at this here, yeah, this setup, we see a cross, right? So, <laughs> as you already can conceive, what I'm going to tell you now is that basically the Roman Catholic Church they um, co-opted this um, hypercube model. They said that when you put it. Um, and when you split it in these six fragments, so they base this cross on something very fundamental, but it's not um, what Christians, for instance, think as fundamental thereof. It's, it's rather uh, um, dealing with the um, general uh, geometric setup of the whole earth, okay? So they co-opted this um, cross symbol for their agendas and um, religious mind control, uh, but they derived it actually or distilled it from um, the actual environment wherein everything is transpiring actually, so this is very funny, but anyway, so let's talk a little bit about this earth realm, let's focus on one of these um, fractals here, on one realm, yeah? So I have this laser pointer, now let's talk a little bit about the rooftop, which is obviously flat, just as um, observed in reality. And as you also already know, the sun is moving from east to west. Let's um, conceive this as north, south, east and west. And the sun is moving from east to west, uh, dragged along by magnetic lines of force. Yeah? So, and we have um, this equator line, then we have the northern tropic, and we have the southern tropic. With the left hand it's a little bit shaky, but I think it works. Anyway, so the sun is moving throughout the year in quotation marks from north to south. Yeah? It's always going from east to west, east to west, winds and repeat every day, day in, day out, always, okay? Because it's just the fucking magnetic model that is applied here, okay? So, anyway, the sun is moving from east to west, dragged along by magnetic lines and force, and um, we already got aware, or many are aware of um, reportings or sightings, that the sun has been observed north of the northern tropic. So, we wouldn't expect that, um, normally this should be impossible actually, yeah? but it is uh, frequently uh, uh, reported, so how can this work? Well, actually, the sunlight itself is a reflection anyway, naturally, yeah? and um, we have these magnetic um, boundaries, yeah? these walls here, these magnetic walls, and the sunlight is actually also reflecting off of this, in this case, northern wall, wall okay? And therefore, uh, people see the reflection that is coming off this northern magnetic wall, 
and then they see the sun <laughs> but it's a reflection of this boundary this northern boundary because um, these walls or these confinements are of magnetic nature these are magnetic walls like reported on also in uh, many ancient cosmologies when they speak of mountains and stuff like that these are these walls magnetic walls or boundaries confinements and um, the sunlight is reflecting off of uh, for instance of this rooftop and thereby it becomes visible to us in the first place because if light doesn't reflect off of something you wouldn't be able to see it uh, at all uh, because it's an instantaneous event and um, so anyway the light is reflecting off of these boundaries and the rooftop of course it also reflects off the um, atmospheric density or layers no question about that but initially it becomes visible by reflecting off of this rooftop and also when it reflects off of these boundaries then maybe also in the south maybe someone could observe that the sun is spotted more south than it should be um, residing or whatever so okay anyway so this is magnetic models from east to west because it's 4d structure geometric support structure wherein these realms are perpetuated and all of these realms are single earth parallel systems and um, I think I'm now going to put the hypercube together because then I can go on with the stuff and um, so give us a little break here Okay, here we are again with the now complete hypercube, but before I forget that, let's talk a little bit about the diamond, because I totally missed this in the first uh, video. So actually this diamond here, this is the, absolutely the ground base of this realm, yeah, it's a tilted square essentially and uh, the ground floor of a pyramid, because this whole thing is actually a pyramid, only it is kept at the top. So these realms, as we just have displayed. Um, but anyway, so we have the diamond, and actually it's funny that this blue, uh, <laughs> blue avians, but anyway. So um, the diamond is absolutely the model that you should look into when you want to make detail work. So go to Flat Earth Conspiracy Channel and one Valiki, they have the stuff completely figured out. So um, anyway, now we have this hypercube here. Yeah. Now the six fra uh, fragments of fractals are uh, combined <coughs> or converged and so where's the laser pointer? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about this red cube here in the middle because this is where all the basically the apexes of all these six fragments are converging and meeting again if you like and in the center thereof there is the sun that is rotating due to toroidal acceleration and um, it's doing its rotation and um, thereby it's also instantaneously emitting its light and this light is then reflected into all of these six fractals or fragments within this hypercube into all these realms like like with from a prison it's reflected into these realms here yeah and uh, you can see this here with these nice effects with the laser it's uh, actually a little bit here refracting or whatever um, but the light comes from within the black hole and it's then reflected within into these uh, fractals and these truncated pyramids or trapezoids and when we go into this into this black hole here then we enter these dimensional realms or environments like shown in interstellar when he's entering the black hole he's entering another dimensional setup which is located in a different geometric support structure that is also perpetuated within toroid because of course this 4d hypercube is also perpetuated within a toroid as always and the toroid is within a, another support structure which is also perpetuated within a toroid and so forth but anyway we are still with the 40 hypercube so we have this black hole the light is then reflected into all of these six fragments and then it is there uh, with uh, dragged along by magnetic lines of force and they can observe the sunlight and anything else moving from east to west whatever yeah but when you are in in this black hole then you have the oversight over all of these fragments all of these parallel 
reality-based systems or reality-based systems that are each located within such a fractal or fragment in, in one of these truncated pyramids in this case yeah so you have to complete oversight over all of them and this is also why it is so um, probable that these are all real, uh, parallel systems of the same Earth. Because when you are in this black hole and you have this oversight over all these parallel uh, existences and timelines, basically it's all about timelines again. Yeah, these are also timelines. Every one of these single dimensional cubes or however we want to call them, where you can look into when you are in this state of consciousness or on this frequency or on this environment in the end, ultimately in the environment, where you can observe all of these parallel systems. Uh, we also upload a video, this infinitesimalography video, there you can see this displayed um, thanks to the interstellar bonus material. <laughs> this is very mind-blowing but also very advanced stuff but anyway so you have all these parallel realms yeah which you can observe and these are entailed within this black hole in this new setup but anyway let's do this here so imagine you have this cube here yeah and um, actually there's no movement okay um, what is happening is that your consciousness the only thing that is moving essentially is your consciousness but um, um, this cube here yeah imagine now that there's another cube here another cube here another one here and so forth ad infinitum so cube 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 and everywhere cubes behind this cube there are cubes and here aside of it there were cubes adjacent cubes everywhere yeah just imagine that there were cubes everywhere yeah so let's focus on this one here because we are now going through these cubes and this is your consciousness here it is moving through all of these cubes and every of this cube like this one here these infinite cubes that you are uh, basically projecting it's a projection you are projecting your consciousness through all these cubes and thereby the dreamed up movement takes place it is basically like a film reel yeah when you have all these pictures on the film reel and we are when, when you then project light onto this film you end up on a projection screen with moving pictures and this is basically the same principle of what is transpiring here with when your consciousness is moving through all these cubes that are lined up or are joined side by side these all these 4d hypercubes are uh, adjacent side by side and um, you are moving through them and every single cube is one single moment now moment okay because it's a hologram it's holographic and it's infinite holographic and therefore it's no problem they are also repeating within themselves and but this is then another dimensional setup and this is a higher dimensional geometric support structure so we stay with this here and this um it's really it's it's like a film So again, uh, it's it's like a film wheel, and your consciousness is the light that is projected onto this film wheel, and then all these holographic or super holographic environments and images and figures and everything comes to fruition. So your body and your environment is all is all holographic, super holographic, and it's consciousness moving endlessly through these cubes these adjoint holographic super hologram cube cubes or holo super hologram cubes anyway so um and within here in, within this cube there's a black hole and these are the dielectric inertial plates yeah and within them the information is stored and the light that is coming from within the black hole is projected through this dielectric inertial plate and thereby the holograms or the holographic environment is created or the holograms are created and generated yeah and uh, this is how everything comes to pass which you are observing which you are interacting with and what have you so you are living inside such a 4d hypercube which itself is perpetuated within uh, this octagonal hypercube this prior earth universe hologram construct it's octagonal and um, therein we have these 4d hypercubes and they are the support structure for these 3d realms the 3d truncated pyramid trapezoid like realms with a flat surface and a flat rooftop and you have a certain angle which is uh, also playing a role in the observation of the sky the luminaries and all this stuff 23.5 or whatever 
uh, go to the flat of conspiracy channel one Waliki they figured all the stuff out already and um, yeah so I think this is it so this is where you live in here in this cube in one of these truncated pyramids here yeah, it's flat, it's fucking flat, yeah, and the rooftop is flat, and anything, and here's a black hole, and there was the sun and all this other stuff, but we're going to do more research on this, how this actually works, what rotation takes place therein, because what we see actually in the sky, like these plasma moon and sun and all the plasma luminaries, they're really looking like this, um, but um, their light comes from beyond the black hole, yeah, and... Um, the, it's hard to describe but it's uh, then channeled or converted into this realm and then it's reflecting off of this and then we can see it and record it and all this stuff so anyway this is it for this presentation all unconditional love all peace all blessings all right so um if you guys can, want to watch the entire lecture you can search in youtube darren nesbitt new earth model and then uh, you'll find it um i didn't watch the entire video because I found it uh, too, too long. It was a two hour uh, presentation. And um, I, so I skipped through it. I, uh, yeah, I heard him talk about 4D, but the rest was a little bit in my, my, in my eyes um, or in my mind. Or I, I found uh, the rest a little bit um, uh, physical uh, and not uh, uh, in regards to the holographic nature of everything. But I could have missed something, so if I missed it, that he that he noticed that or said something about that, because uh, I did see him notice that the Pac-Man nature of uh, of the plane and how, how things work uh, in uh, in the in the weird in the weird circle. <laughs> Pile of rocks waving at you. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually a thing. I'm a being. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Cork. I'm kind of like the leader in here. I'm made of rocks, as you can see. But don't let that intimidate you. You don't need to be afraid unless you're made of scissors. <laughs> Just a little rock paper scissor joke for you. This is my very good friend over here, Meek. He's an insect and has nice little hands. You're a crown, aren't you? That I am. How do you end up in here? Oh, well, I tried to start a revolution, but didn't print enough pamphlets, so hardly anyone turned up, except for my mum and her boyfriend, who I hate. As punishment, I was forced to be in here and become a gladiator. Bit of a promotional disaster, that one. But I'm actually organising another revolution. I don't know if you'd be interested in something like that. Do you reckon you'd be interested? How do you... Ah, yeah, nah, this whole thing is a circle. But not a real circle, more like a freaky circle. This doesn't make any sense. Nah, nothing makes sense here, man. The only thing that does make sense is that nothing makes sense. And how, 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 uh, how you can come come off the other end and come back in the, the one end. Um, and he explained that uh, with 4D, but I didn't I didn't hear him talk about the 4D hypercube. Uh, like I showed you the, the the moving picture of the 4D hyper for of the of the Tesseract or anything like that and uh, the holographic nature of it that's what I was missing from it but if, if I uh, if I'm wrong you know you can correct me in the comments if you have anything else regarding this let me know in the comments and uh, I'll be sure to check your comments and uh, you guys uh, have a nice day